What's up, guys? This is Mike Kardashian from Blue Chip Scouting. I'm joined by Devin Jackson of Blue Chip Scouting. You might know us better as the Big Shots NFL Draft Podcast, but that's not why we're here today. Today, we are here to talk about the NFL Draft, but to do a team-specific mock draft. We're going to be doing this a lot for Blue Chip Scouting over the next couple of weeks because the draft is less than six weeks away. Six weeks away. So, Devin, we're starting with the Rams. This should be easy, right? They got like three picks. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, a lot of their picks are going to be later on in the draft. I uh, believe they have a, a third rounder and then a uh, late fourth and, and then pretty much all late day three picks. So um should be should be fairly quick, but but I think they're going to have to hit nail every single pick here and, and try to get uh, immediate contributors because, you know, you want to repeat and, and go back to the Super Bowl. You're, you're going to need some infusion of young talent on that team, especially with some pending free agents like Darius Williams. Von Miller, among others. And obviously the offense, I think, is set to go. But, but some interior uh, offensive line, as well as linebacker and defensive back, I, I think it's going to be the big keys they need to hit uh, for the Rams uh, in, in, in this draft class. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you say we get right into this? I'm going to share my screen and we'll get going. Let's do it. All right. So first of all, I want to thank our friends over at Pro Football Network for providing us with the mock draft simulator you can see my screen all right yep all right so i'm gonna hit let's draft so we're gonna go with the rams obviously uh, i've got it on fast because otherwise we're gonna be here all day uh it's a good thing that we're doing this one pre-recorded but some of these we are going to do live uh well we're waiting for our pick to come up i figure this is a good time as any so a lot of what you're going to see from us over the next couple of weeks is going to be some of these pre-recorded. We're going to throw on some live ones for teams that have a lot of picks uh, or just really popular teams like the Cowboys, like the Eagles, like the Dolphins, Giants, etc. Large fan bases, we're going to do it live during prime time, but there are also going to be ones where we just batch them together. So we are on the clock now at 104. Um, and again, you mentioned we needed edge. We need offensive tackle. Andrew Whitworth is 41 years old now. Uh, no guarantee he's going to be back. There's there's going to be a lot of roster turn turnover, and the and rosters are built on day three of the draft. So I'm taking a look. Obviously, it has wide receiver, running back uh, Caleb Ellaby, one of your guys at quarterback from Western Michigan, is uh, on the board. But again, we don't need to, to bark up that tree. Now there is someone from your neck of the woods at linebacker here, mm -hmm. Demon yep. Clark. Yep. Would he yep. fit this system? I think so. I think he's kind of underrated in this draft process, you know, because obviously our eyes are on Derek Stingley uh, and what he brings to the table. But, I mean, Damone Clark was the best player on this defense. And uh, you look at the, this linebacker list, I mean, four of those guys, I would not be upset if the Rams took any of these four guys. You I know, wouldn't be and, surprised if all – I mean, personally, I think all four of these guys are going to end up being graded higher than 104th. For sure. I mean, the Clark probably, I'm, I'm, if he falls this late, I, I think a team will be dying to get him. I, I'm taking a look at the edge list now. I think it's a little too early for really any of these guys. Alex Wright is maybe the lone exception. For sure. But we don't know what his testing is going to look like. I think that's going to be the big thing with him, how high he goes is can he test, you know, because he couldn't test, uh, you know, last time around uh, at the combine, you know, hurt his peck at, 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 in lifting and, We'll see if he if he does so or did so at at uh, his pro day. So you look at the the tackle list. I mean, well, let's go and Mitchell. I think Mitchell's going to be long gone by the time the, the draft actually comes around and at 104. I will say I think I like Dar Dare Rosenthal from Kentucky as a developmental guy. If they're looking to stick with Whitworth and then transition to someone new, I think Rosenthal will be a nice dart throw pick on day three. I like three, Cole though. Strange here as well. And then if we move inside, there's Cam Jurgens. But I think that if we're if we're gonna stay true to the mock, then I think that realistically Strange is gone. Right? Could I, be. I, I mean, could be, but all right. yeah, I also, I, I, also all right. think about, you know, you need someone that is going to be able to play immediately. Also, I know Strange is there. I think Damone Clark would probably be the pick yeah. here. And, and, and again, I, you know what? Listen, he's listed at 178th here. Max Mitchell is not going to be on the board at 104. 
So, like, even if I wanted to, I'm actually gonna gonna put the kibosh on that pick. We cannot pick Max Mitchell; he will not be there. That's fair. So, I I, I am a, I am in agreement. We are going to, even though there are two brand guys listed very shortly after Debone Clark and Troy Anderson for you and Terrell Bernard for me. I think I'm gonna override our fandom and our and our brand, and I'm gonna go with Debone Clark out of LSU from your neck of the woods. Yeah, it can be a true mic for that team, and and they need someone to be consistent in the middle because they they have a lot of like younger guys and, and guys that uh, don't necessarily bring. I think that the speed and athleticism he brings to the table and what he he brought on tape. So I I think he should be the pick there, and you know I I would not be mad if if they ended up with him. There are there are a couple of names that are standing out to me for for various reasons for this next pick. So I had 142 which is their second pick of the draft. I am looking at uh, Dario Rosenthal from, from Kentucky, who you mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. I'm also looking at Beef Jerky himself, uh, Cam Jurgens out of uh, Nebraska. Be a perfect fit in terms of being an athletic center in that offense. Yeah, scheme two will be great. One, just, I mean, Devin, why would you draft um, – why? Why on earth would did the Rams draft Tutu Atwell at like fifty one overall when Calvin Austin is apparently going to be available at pick one hundred and forty two? Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man. Um, still a By year the later, way, Calvin still Austin puzzling. is better than Tutu Atwell. I just want to put that out there. I'm surprised he, he's even available right now, but I don't think he's I, going to be. Yeah, I, that, there there are some interesting picks here. I think. To me, the Rams, again, they need someone you can kind of plug in immediately, right? I think Cam Jurgens is that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm thinking Cam Jurgens, And I I would have loved Dari Rosenthal there. I think he's a great developmental piece. But I I just see the value in Jurgens. I think he's going to be a perfect scheme fit. You get someone who probably is one of the best outside zone centers outside of Tyler Linderbaum. Uh, and some you can get kind of that same value even later in, in at that late fourth round. I think that's a, a great spot to get them. Now, Devin, we now are back on the clock at 210, and we have three of the next four picks, so we can really control the draft. So, to so say. I'm, I'm thinking our game plan here is we get a secondary Ooh. player, we get some offensive line help as well, I, more offensive line help. I. In, in, Donovan West out of out of Arizona State is still available. I think that that's a good pick. Let's see what's at the the tackle because we still need to, to we still need that. a tackle. We have Bam Olaseti from uh, Utah. We have Spencer Burford from UTSA. We have Luke Tenuta from Virginia Tech that stand out to me. Also, we got three of the next four picks, so yes, so we can we can spread this out a little bit. And then what's what's available corner wise? Because I, I want to see if there's a, a difference maker there. What about safety? I know safety isn't a, a big need for them, but but maybe I don't even it, know. I, I know Tyson Anderson and Reed Blankenship, and I don't know who any of these other people are. Percy Butler. I need nope. to know who that is. Yeah, I know who that is, but I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm not sure. All right. So before before we make this pitch, can you go back to team needs real quick? Absolutely. Because so, I want to see something here. I, see. I am not going to try to expand on that because I don't want to risk like losing right, the page. Right, right, right. But it's right. edge, center, tackle, linebacker, and running back. Oddly okay. enough. Okay, so we got linebacker, we got center, we need edge, so we need to address edge over in these next. And it doesn't have to be someone we think is because Christopher Allen, for example, he's he gonna, only played yeah. one game, but and, he's also good. Yeah. So think about this. So the Rams did take. Terrell Lewis from Alabama, similar type of player. Would they do the same thing with Christopher Allen? And would they get the same type of player? That, I think they took Lewis in like the third, if I remember correctly. Yep. Yep. They're getting a very similar player at a three round discount. So you got, I mean, you got some options here. Yeah. All right. Can I, can I suggest who I would pick with this particular spot? For sure. I, I think at first we need to, again, 
They need help on the interior. Even if it's depth. I I I I'd say Donovan West from from Arizona State. I don't argue with that. I think you know you you have to address that. I mean, even though you got Cam Jurgens, you still need more bodies on in that offensive line, especially in the interior. I think yeah. Andrew Whitworth. I think we're gonna and have again, to find three of the next someone. Four, three of the next for, four picks. You can take your time with this one. So I'm I'm sure. gonna say Donovan West. You cool with that? Yep. All right, we have the next pick as well, and that's why I'm actually thinking that we go. Uh, oh, you know what? Someone I, I thought was going to be available isn't here now. I think we. I think we go Christopher Allen with this next one. I think so. I think that All makes right. sense. Uh, in, in just in and then a Caleb game. Evans goes fine. I wasn't considering him, and now we go back to tackle, and I'm going to say Bam Olaseni. Yeah, I think we got the think... three guys we wanted. I think when you, I think that what separates between like Olaseni and Devin, do you want to make more picks here. or do you want to just get, get on out of here? Because it seems like like Pittsburgh wants to trade with us. Um, I want to see. I wish we could see who was on the board before we. I can't really. We, I, I I think I can. Yeah. Counter. No, I can't. Okay. I can't um. That. Sorry. Do you, you want to make two more picks or do you want to make do it. three? Two picks? more. Two more. Let's do it. Sure, why not? Okay. This will never happen. I'm not taking no division rivals. All right, who's left on the board? Top player, Emeka Mezier. Oh, my God, he's still here. How is Dylan Parham still here? Okay, I'm protesting this on principle. He's not going to be here. He's not going in the seventh round. He's going to be going in, like, round three. That's fair. I mean... Man, it, now it makes you think that this is a, the beautiful thing about mock drafts is that now you're like, man, maybe we should have waited out and, and see it, see who was available. But we're here now. So um, I don't really think tight end is going to be a big need for them. Uh, I mean, we, we can we can play devil's advocate and see what they have at running back. I'm starting to like not know who most of these players are. <laughs> Oh my God! Jake Hansen from Illinois is in this class. I thought he was like three drafts ago. Nope, he's he's in this one. Um, I don't think they really need no, anyone no. in the interior. No, Let, but can you, ima- can you imagine having Kalen Humphrey or Marquand McCall there just for the sake of that of eating up three blockers so that Aaron Donald can go murder some quarterback? We don't we don't need that. Let's let's go to <laughs> running backs real quick just to see who's on the board. Just just why not? Ty See Chandler, a... I don't know who Quay Holmes is. Connor Hayward's actually a tight end. Uh, Kevin Hayward, uh, Kevin Harris has less burst than I do. Ooh, Deshaun Corbin. Yeah, we'll, we'll save that pick. I think he's still going to be there. We'll save that pick for the last one since we have another one. Um, Devin, yeah, we, we, we still do have two more picks. You are correct. Let's see. So we, we got tackle. We got guard. We got center. Got a linebacker. Um, These are luxury picks at this point, Devin. Let, let's look with the let's look at the board and see who's the best available. Best available is Emeka Mezier. I, I'm gonna argue and say we go Dylan Parham, right, even though correct. he's not supposed to be here. I think there's. I've a already done it. There. It's too late to talk me out of it. Oh, we have two more picks now. Do we actually? Hang on, just for the sake. Oh God, we do. All right. So now that kind of changes things here. You know what? Let's let's go ahead and go running back. I'm gonna go Jay Sean Corbin. All right. So I, I think if we wait any longer, he's uh he's gonna be gone. And now our last pick of the draft, Devin. The best player on the board at 259 is actually I haven't heard of either of the top two players. Uh yeah, Tanner Connor, he was at the Shrine Bowl from Ohio, Idaho State. Sure. I know. I know Isaiah Weston is. I know Isaiah Weston, but I. These other names. I'm, I'm not. I know the the South <laughs> Dakota State quarterback as well. But these, dude, you know me. I go are... deep in into drafts, and I. And, you know what? I... Late round seven is where you pound the table for your guys. For your guys, take Tyson Anderson here, man. I think oh, special here. teams upside could be a slot corner. At the NFL level, uh, just going to play safety starting off, and I, I think that's where you, where you go here. And you know what? So we we that that's our draft. We'll run through it. Devon Clark, Cam Jurgens, 
Then we waited almost uh, 70 picks to get Donovan West. Then we got Chris Allen, Bam Olaseti, Dylan Parham somehow at like a five-round value because we're just that good. Hire us, Les Snead. Uh, Deshaun Corbin, and then someone that you can watch Devin have an interview with on this very YouTube channel, Tyson Anderson. Yep, yep. Uh, all, all great names here. I, I think the Rams get uh, at least three three starters uh, potentially next year with the Mon Clark, uh, Cam Jurgens, and and uh, possibly Parham. Yeah, Parham as well. So uh, you're That's getting our guys best that, value pick easily. Then you get uh, a special teams ace in, in Tyson Anderson and a potential uh, third or fourth on the depth chart running back. And we know the running back position for them has been decimated over the last couple of years. So having that insurance, I think, is going to help. Yeah. Well, that will do it for today. We will be back probably on Monday. I think that's how our schedules worked. Uh, don't quote me on that one, Devin. That's more up your alley. But, you know, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new to the channel, and uh, we will be back with the Cincinnati Bengals of all teams in our next episode.